Hosea, chapter 4. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Verse 11. Okay. Uh, new wine. The question is, uh, uh, the context is, read it again. Hosea, chapter 4. Are the tree wine and new wine in slave the heart? Wine and new wine. The, you're wondering what the, uh, the wine and the new wine, what's the difference? Um, wine, kind of like Canaan, Canaan, the wedding feast of Canaan of Galilee, yeah. they had uh, uh, some wine and then um, inferior wine and better wine. Okay? Uh, so, in, in no different winemaking skills today, you know, uh, a bottle of scotch on the, on the wall, you know, at the liquor store. You say, hey, what's the difference between that 11 year bottle of scotch and this 40 year bottle of scotch? The price. The price is a big difference right there. That's right. That's going to stop people short. But then beyond that, it's going to be what? The flavor, the potency, the pungency. Does that make sense? Uh, in this context, probably, very possibly, the exact same. Yes. I've got a different translation that it might bring a lot more light to it. Sure. Okay, so this is the message translation. It says, Wine and whiskey leave many people in stupor. They ask questions of a dead tree. Expect answers from a sturdy walking stick. And then drunk on sex, they can't find their way home. They replace their gods with their genitals. They worship on top of the mountain. Yeah, they worship sex. Let's just say it. Let's just say it. Let's call it what it is. All right. So, um, yes. When you make a, I, I was a bit surprised about this in terms of uh, we had a guy in mind a long time ago that was going to go back east, and I said, "Well, do you ever get any of that moonshine?" He said, "Oh yeah." And then he was telling about making moonshine, and he said, that "You have to age the moonshine before it comes up as it drips out of the condenser." I said, well, how long do you have to age it? He said, well, it depends on how big of a hurry you are. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, 20 hours, 24 hours. Age, but it has to age first. So the implication here is wine, new wine, new wine is not aged. Right. It's, uh, then the term would be, it would be a little raw, because you would taste the alcohol first before you would taste the wine. Um, in all reality, guys, I'm not 100 percent sure on on what the you know. I mean, we can we can pinpoint and think about it from our perspective, but please understand that new wine is also viewed as a good thing sometimes in the scriptures. Uh, also viewed sometimes as a negative thing. So it's hard to, to distinguish exactly how it's being viewed in this context because uh, scripture talks about uh, the Holy Spirit being refilled and God giving us in that sense new wine. That's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing. Um, and so that's something to, to stop and consider as well. Okay, so real quick, uh, let me give a, a recap. How far did you guys make it? About five minutes in, is that it? Three minutes, two minutes, whatever? Okay. Uh, thank you, Billy. Did you guys help me with prayer? Yeah. Yes. She said no. Yes. I didn't hear him. Yeah. Okay, you good. Everybody else say no? You wouldn't share, you are still coming in, finding your cup of coffee, finding your seat, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's pray anyways. Here's mine, we do that, I could use it. You could use it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the ability and the opportunities that we have to come together, Father, to this place, this house of worship, this house of prayer, Father, this house of learning. Father, I pray that as we are gathered here together today, that we would align your, ourselves with your word. Father, that our opinions would be set aside, that we could come back to the Word. Father, on this very delicate and touchy subject, this very controversial subject, Father, I pray that you would show us your truth, your will, your ways, Jesus, in all things. We love you and we praise you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's very important, guys, that uh, as we're looking at this subject, there are a lot of different ways to view this. A lot of pastors get up and say, you know, you're going straight to hell if you even think about it, buying a beer, you know, uh, or wine, or whatever. Uh, and, and, and it's kind of tainted by their worldview, their experiences, a few passages that they've seen in the scriptures. Then there's other pastors that get up here, hey, guys, you guys doing? And they can't even hardly stand up or whatever. 
I've actually seen ministers uh, not talk about the Spirit. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, um, what we need to do is find a biblical foundation for this subject. And why now? Because the world in which we're living, um, it's kind of a, it's kind of one, it's kind of a problem, but two, it's kind of also something that's been hit a lot lately, you know, liquor stores, uh, beer aisles, things like that. And so, what I don't want to do is see a lot of Christians walking in condemnation if they get spotted by a fellow, fellow church member. You know what I'm talking about? All right, good. But, um, but nor do I want to condone drunkenness or a lifestyle that leads to debauchery. Okay, so we're not going to do that either. So let's find what the scriptures actually say. We looked last Sunday at a lot of verses in the scriptures, and you have those on your paper. Um, there's a ton of blue papers right here as well. Uh, if you got, you know, they're making copies, but there's blue paper right here, brand new ones, 15 or 18 of them. If you forgot your paper, there's some fill in the blanks, and, and it has every single one of the scripture references that we're looking at uh, right there on that table. Yes? Uh, I just have a quick comment. Uh, when I was growing up in the Assemblies of God, they were told, told to us, to our parents, that uh, we do not allow smoking and drinking. And it, it was told to me later when I understood that it harms your insides, your body, and you are taking your life sooner than sooner. Now, maybe God wants you to live to be a hundred years old, I don't know, but it, well, and it proves that you drink too much alcohol and you get uh, liquor, what is it? Liver poisoning. Yeah. Cirrhosis of the liver. Sure. And smoking your heart. Lungs, heart, yeah, sure. There's also a Bible verse where Paul's speaking to Timothy, and he tells him that a little bit of wine to drink a little wine first go before his stomach issues. Yes. And so there's some uh, that's not a blanket statement straight across the board, true. I would agree that smoking um, is bad through and through, but drinking bad through and through, I can't agree with that. Again, if, if that was universally true, straight across the board, then why did Jesus turn water into wine as his first miracle? And why did he have what we know to be alcoholic wine at the Last Supper? Communion. Why is that the case? How do we know that that was alcoholic at the Last Supper? I'll tell you how. Culture. Jewish culture. Their customs. This is something that the, in the Old Testament it, it, it said, hey listen, when you're coming before the Lord, there's an offering of, of wine to bring. Um, in the Proverbs it talked about watered down wine not being, not being viewed as a good thing. So to say that you know, well, smoking and drinking, no, um, I would agree smoking is just bad for your health. And, 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 and my heart really breaks for those who are struggling with that addiction. It is an addiction. It's, it's hard to break. Believe it or not, I tried to pick up that habit when I was a kid growing up. I had a lot of friends that were doing it, and it was cool, and I tried it, and I, I, really, I really gave it a go. And finally I got to the point, I'm like, this is dumb. Why am I trying to start this habit? This this is really dumb. I mean, how many people do I know that are trying to start this? Not a single one. Why am I doing this? How many people do I know that are trying to trying to quit this, trying to stop this? A lot of people. So to me, that was kind of like, duh. Okay, stop. Stop before you really start. So I I, I laid that down. I laid that down. But now alcohol, on the other hand. What, is the, what does the Bible have to say? Not just what does your worldview have to say. We must come back to a biblical, solid foundation on this subject. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, now, exactly, the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. All right, so we need to know the truth on this subject, because there are people in bondage on both sides. And we need to come back to a balanced position. Now, that being said, 
I want to tell you what the scriptures firmly teach. Uh, and you can see that in Romans, uh, Romans 14, 1 Corinthians 8. The entire chapters are dedicated to your conscience being your guide. In other words, if you're struggling with this, then you don't need to say, well, pastor says it's okay, therefore I'm going to get back into it. Wrong answer. You with me? Yes. If you're if you're having some serious, like, I can't even go around this stuff, well, then don't. Okay? If this is something that's been a vice to you, then don't. Uh, there, there's, there's, there's people who struggle with the, the P word. Well, anyways, um, sexual immorality, can we go with that word? You guys connecting the dots? They're struggling with seeing nakedness. You with me? Okay. I don't want to say some too much because there's you know kids that we really don't want to get. All right. Uh, <laughs> overexposure, right? There's kids that, that are there's people that are struggling with this. Hold on. And and the idea, yeah, TMI. Uh, the idea is, listen, if, if flipping through a sales brochure and you come to the swimsuit section pushes you over the edge. Then what do you need to do? Not even go near. Not even go near the sales brochures, right? Hello? That means when you're standing in aisle, you know, and you look up and there's the tap lights and there's somebody, whoa, somebody got caught in a, you know, peculiar position and, and you know, whatever the case may be, and they got a snap photo and it's blocked out. You don't even need to look. Whoa, whoa. nope, nope, nope. It's the second glance that's going to do you some harm. So look down. Your business is now on your shoes, on your floor, fake, fake, fake a bloody nose, just kind of, you know what I'm saying? Well, why is it any different on, on this subject? I don't want to be afraid to speak about this subject because, I'll come back to you, I don't want to be afraid to speak on this subject because there's such abuse on this subject. Am I afraid to talk about, come on guys, you guys know me better than this, am I afraid to talk about, you know, intimacy? No, I'll talk about it. Why? Because I'm not afraid of it. Because the truth will set you free. Amen. But the intimacy outside of its proper boundaries is bondage. Amen. It's wrong. It's sin. Amen. Well, this subject literally is no different. Outside of its proper boundaries is wrong. It gets you into trouble. It gets you into trouble fast. So keeping this balanced, we're okay. All right? Step in. I know with myself, uh, not only with what I've seen as a child on the reservation and that, but uh, watching my mother die of alcoholism at 12 years old. Um, I was only when I lived in the and uh, I know not only every day, and that uh, I was an alcoholic at a very young age. I grew up around it, I partake of it. And it was you know, the world where it was acceptable. But I have learned that I can't I can't touch it. And I am in I am in the grasp of the devil if I even partake of it. So I really am consciously aware of myself Good. and of what I do whenever I go to gatherings and there may be a you have to guard up. I, I do honestly just, it's not, I don't try and tempt myself with it. It's like, Good. oh, just a couple of beers is just fine. No, not even a drop is fine. Not for me. Not with the way my mind is. Amen. That's very good, and I applaud you for knowing your boundaries and being able to stay with your boundaries. Oh, good right. job. Come on, guys. Give her a hand. That's awesome. Next time, raise your hand so we can get to the microphone so they can oh. hear it online. Okay, Ms. Dora. Can you explain to me why? Uh, Super Bowl. Why on the commercials a lot of beer? Yeah. I can only speculate. I can't explain. I can explain. Oh, you can speculate as well. All right. Um, Possibly. We don't know. Um, yes, David. 
Can I share with you what my thoughts are? Sure. Um, you know, being in uh, addiction ministry, um, can I have a beer? Yes, I can. Have I? Yeah, I drink and have a beer. Four years ago, didn't like it. Um, you know, I feel like God's taking that from me, but I can't tell somebody to do something and then on the other hand, and then what? On the other hand, go and drink wine or drink beer. Knowing that there's some people in our ministry that it hurts. You bet. You bet. And that's exactly, again, going back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and Romans chapter 14. Listen, when you're doing these things, you're exercising some liberties around other believers who are struggling in this area. You're wrong. You're wrong to do that. Why? Because you're putting their their conscience in jeopardy. You can hurt them. You can hurt their, their walk. And we don't want to do that. We cannot do that. The Bible talks about bathing everything. Everything that we do is in love. And if I if I knowingly, uh, uh, if I have a, a, a beer around you, Saxon, I, I don't know the case, okay? But let's just say, for example, can I use you as my guinea pig? If I have a beer around you, and that is something that you are struggling to come out of, Alcohol addiction, abuse. I mean, you puked more times than you can count recently, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm having a beer around you going, hey, yeah, this is all good. And just being around the smell is just, oh my goodness, I, I can't handle myself. And I know this is the case. How is that love? That's throwing you back under the bus. That's throwing you back into bondage. And that is something we as Christians cannot do. Amen? Amen. But on the other side of this, so this is what I want to talk about. The balanced side of this doesn't mean that I can never have a beer. No, it does not mean that. It does not say that. It I'm means that I must be mindful of the people I'm around. Okay, does, it, does that make sense? And then I also must be mindful of the very real dangers that are attached with this. Are we clear? Does this make sense? Why do I want to be so adamant about this? Because I'm seeing bondage all over the place, all over this subject. I had one person actually challenge me, why would you talk about this? Our church has got a lot of people struggling with sobriety, struggling through addictions. And the conclusion that I came to is I must tell the truth, what I see in the Word of God. I cannot be afraid to tell the truth. I cannot be afraid to approach a particular subject because it could be too much or over the top. If I teach the word, if I if I teach the word, the either the truth will set you free or it'll bring into bondage. No, no we must teach the word. Our, is that okay? Amen. Yes. So what I'm endeavoring to do is show both the there's a positive side to this in the scriptures, as well as a negative side, a very disastrous side, and something that that we had. I told you last Sunday during this is there is a lot more on the negative side specifically in the New Testament because there's a very very real danger amen, amen. let me uh, let me share a story real quick and it'll kind of I hope that it'll help you understand this um, this is a great this is a great story and I believe it's very applicable on about every aspect of life so to speak um, there was a man who loved baseball. Okay? I mean, he just, he knew player stats, he knew the teams, he knew scores, he knew the history of the teams. I mean, he could tell you who was on home plate during the you know, 1961 World Series, blah, blah, blah. He could just tell you all these things. He knew these things. He collected cards. And it was so, but he, he was a Christian. He loved Jesus. He followed the word. Amen? But he was so wrapped up into this. One day the Lord said, listen, this is becoming an idol to you. This is a problem. This is out of balance. I want you to stop this. And he struggled with that. But he finally came to the conclusion, I love God more than I love baseball, so I'm going to do this. So he took all of his collection, worth thousands of dollars, he took all of his collection and got rid of them. He got rid of them. He forced himself not to look at the newspaper with the players, of course, to not look for... You know, what's going on? Who's playing who? What is the scores? How did they win? What's going on? 
he made himself, he disciplined himself to let this thing go. He'd been doing several months very good. Very good, very solid. He's following the Lord. He's, he's loving Jesus. And several months later, nine months later or so, um, one of his buddies comes up and says, Hey, listen, we've got an extra, we have an extra ticket to the game. Would you like to go? And the guy says, How dare you? How dare you? Don't you know that baseball is a sin? Don't you know that it is not of God? God will make you stop and you just listen to him. Is that true? No. Baseball's a sin? <laughs> Was it a sin? No. For him. Not to the other fellow. Was it a sin to him? Yeah. Why? Because God told him to stop because he had put it in an unhealthy place. He allowed it to get to an unhealthy place. Does this make sense? Yeah. Same way with everything else. Same way with this subject. When we allow these things to get to unhealthy places, then it is sin. Anything that is your master outside of Jesus Christ is wrong. Amen. And this could be true for exercise. Come on, guys. It could be true for sports. It could be true for eating habits. It could be true for television shows that are not even wrong. I lost touch by an angel. I'm addicted to touch by an angel. Right? I'm not, I don't know what I've ever seen that. So. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Anything outside of Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior, and outside of the taskmaster of Him, is bondage. Amen. And Jesus said He's here to set us free. So if we know the truth about the subject, we can walk in freedom. We can choose to walk in freedom. But to ignore this subject altogether, because it is a dangerous subject. There's no doubt in my mind that this is a dangerous topic. But to avoid it, as I've done for years, I know where I stand on this subject. One time, and I'll, I'll tell the story real quick. Uh, one time, many years ago, uh, there was a guy, he, he wanted some, some beer that I had. And I said, if you could tell me what the scripture has to say on this subject, then, all right, I'll hook you up. And he says, okay. Uh, I don't know. Uh, ah, 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 Jesus turned water into wine. That's what I know, brother. Hook me up. Uh -uh. Now, we're going to talk about this. And we actually looked at several scriptures. And we unpacked a few things. And right on. Good. So I shared my beer. And it wasn't. But less than six months later, he ended up in the, in the uh, hospital with alcohol poisoning twice. And I've been kicking myself for years. What did I do wrong? How did I approach this wrong? Because I shed it more in a positive light than a negative light. I, I, didn't, I didn't give him all the dangers, the warnings. And he took the good things, ignored the dangers, and haven't we all done that to some extent or another? Not yet. I mean, your buddies, your friends can sell you on just about anything. I'll give you an example. Um, a TV show. Outlander. That's the hot button topic right now. Outlander. I remember back in the day it was Game of Thrones. Spartacus. You guys ever you heard of these? Yeah, you can hear people and they'll talk about all the, wow, yeah, did you see so-and-so, what he did, yeah, it's great. And then you're getting into it, you're going, whoa, hold up, and then before you know it, your hook, line, and sinker into something that God's not in. And it's a problem, right? Because you can sell anybody on the good of it. Well, I did exactly the same. But now it's time that we look at what the Bible actually has to say, what's the negative effects on this? What are the dangers about this? Last week, I shared, you know, there's some positive light in this. And then I was talking to one of my buddies. He said, hey, guess what I learned at church? And I said, what? He goes, the drinking is good. <laughs> Buddy, you better come back next Sunday. 
because that is not what I want to portray. Is it wrong? That's what I want to I'm going to adjust. Is it wrong? You need to decide that between you and God. Amen? Amen. You need to look to the Lord for this. I showed you several scriptures where this was actually viewed as a positive thing. Now let's look at several scriptures in which this is viewed as a very dangerous thing, a very negative thing, okay? So, um, negative passages. Uh, Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Start looking at these passages, guys. Proverbs 21, 17. Proverbs 23, verses 20 and 21. Proverbs 23, 29 through 35. Proverbs chapter 31. These are all Proverbs easy enough to find. Amen. Uh, verses 4 through 7. Leviticus chapter 10, 8 through 10, or excuse me, 8 through 11. Ezekiel chapter 44, 21. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. These are some negative passages. Okay? And let's unpack some stuff. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm ready. Okay. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1. Who has that? Please raise your hand. Right here. Russell? Hi, so Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, it says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Whoever is what? Not wise. No, no, whoever is, is led, astray. led astray by this is not wise. How is how are these being viewed? Wine is a, a mocker. Thank you. Strong drink is a brawler. Wonder why there's so many bar fights? <laughs> because the Bible said so. <laughs> In truth, guys, it's right there. Strong drink is a brawler. When it says strong drink, that is going outside of wine, but it's staying within the parameters of alcohol. Okay? That means beer, mead, porters, ales, etc., and then going into, you know, alcohol, uh, spirits, mixed drinks, etc. Okay? So that's, it's enveloping the whole ball of waxes as alcohol goes. Strong drink is a brawler, and whoever is led astray is not wise. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 17, please. Who has that? Josh. Wait for Billy, please. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. What is the concept here? Positive or negative? Let's nail that down first. Negative. 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 How is this negative? Love. Oh, loving. Gosh. What is loving? Coveting. Loving an inanimate object. Coveting. Coveting. Lust of all the flesh. Lusting after, I desiring like strongly. So if this is your painting, your picture, if, if you if you are drawn a little closer to this, then it's time to watch out. Does that make sense? And what does it say? Uh, love of wine does what? Not be rich, aka you end up poor. Are well, you drinking too much? You're, you're drawn over to something that's not of God. Poverty is not of God. Did you know that? Good for that. Yes, definitely. Uh, no it's almost like a double parable too, because it's, I mean, rich as in worldly, but rich with joy. You know, when you're drunk, when you live in addiction, you have no joy. And your joy mm, comes good. Good. Your joy comes to the Lord. You know, one thing I heard was, uh, in the kingdom, we have joy because we rejoice. You know, and in the world, we were, or we were joy. We rejoice because we have joy in the world, but we have joy because we rejoice. You know what I mean? And so it'll still your joy. You will. Amen. Good. Good perspective. Good thought. Okay. Uh, Proverbs twenty-three. Who had that, Miss Amanda? Very close, right? <laughs> who has woe? Who has sorrow? Oh, wait, wait. oh, you're okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. 29 through 35. Then uh, you're getting verse 20 and 21. Okay, go ahead, Amanda. Sorry. Sorry. 
Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has need needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing, confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of the rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I am not hurt. They beat me, but I do not feel it. When when will I wake up so I can find another drink? Does that sound like a good thing or a bad thing? That sounds like serious addiction. Yeah. Guys, this is something that we, we fight. We're very intentional. We want to see people free. Amen. Is wine and strong drink the culprit in this? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay? So, again, uh, this is something out of balance. And it was let out of balance for a long enough time that you're now in addiction. Okay, it's, it's not just addiction, but it's ruining your life. Uh, all right, Proverbs 23, verse 20 and 21. Uh, Saxon has that. Do not mix with wine givers or with gluttonous eaters of meat. For the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty. And drowsiness will flow a man with rats. Watch the company you keep. Good? Yeah. Okay, uh, Proverbs 31. Raise your hand real high. And Zoe. 4 through 7. It is not for kings, Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire beer. Otherwise, they will drink to forget what is decreed and pervert justice for all the oppressed. Give beer to one who is dying and wine to one whose life is bitter. Let him drink so that he can forget his poverty and remember his trouble. Okay, positive or negative? Positive and negative. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. This is both viewed in a positive as well as a negative sense. This is something that, uh, would you really want President Trump liquored up before he declares war? That's a bad idea, right? Would you want the judge to be a little bit, you know, tipsy when he comes in there and pronounces judgment over you? Oh, come on, guys. No. No, that's that's dangerous territory. It could go any, either way. Depend on his mood. You want mood to be what's judging? Or you want justice, fairness, rightness? Hello? Okay, so this is viewed, viewed as both positive as well as negative. All right, uh, who had Leviticus chapter 10? Clint. Verses 8 through 11. God, God, instructed Abraham, or God instructed Aaron, when you enter the tent of meeting, don't drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons, lest you die. This is a fixed rule down through the generations, distinguished between the holy and the common, between the ritually clean and unclean. Teach the people of Israel all the decrees that God has spoken. Okay, so what is strictly, strictly prohibited here? Absolutely not. Going to church drunk. Yeah, that's that's definitely frowned upon. Um, I've actually had people come through the church doors, and I'm like, whoa, contact high. Did you smoke right before you came into church? smoke a big bowl or something, I mean, for crying out loud, and they were pretty out there. I'm like, oh, uh, you know what, at least you're here. You know, I'll, I'll take that. Maybe God can break through a game in your buzz and, and, and speak to your life, I'm hoping. But what is strictly prohibited here, what is? Going before God's presence to have a meeting with God, being drunk, or out of outsource your faculty. Specifically for those in ministry. 
or those ministering. Do you understand what hypocrisy would look like if you showed up to a recovery meeting daily? Shows up to a recovery meeting stoned. That's hypocrisy. Or drunk. Or high. Or out of sorts in his faculty. That is not only hypocrisy. Guys, let's be honest. That is strictly prohibited before God. God himself told Moses, tell Aaron this. And this is for all generations. Yeah, even this is Ezekiel, which is hundreds of years later um, said the same thing. He said the priest must not drink wine before entering the inner court. Uh, when he order. enters into the inner court. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Ezekiel 44 verse 21 says, no priest shall drink wine when he enters the inner court. Is it limited to wine? No. Anything that would adjust your mental faculties. Anything. Too much caffeine could be a problem. If it's me, let me go, let me go, come on, let You know, I mean, don't you worry, you only have, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Man, you guys are looking, oh, we have a problem. Oh, we have a problem, that's not, no, I'm just kidding. I've only had, how much coffee? In today's, in today's Not so far. You can also consider energy drinks the same way. <coughs> yeah. Because there have been instances <laughs> Use the microphone. <laughs> your your emergency cords are hiding it. Hiding it. it. But in the days for Banker, you could do the you could overdose with energy drinks because what does it do? Because the euphoria gives you energy, locks you up, and there have been teenagers die from overdose of Red Bull. Mm -hmm. Not just teenagers, but people. Uh, and that is, get this, guys, that can be an addiction. Um, I've, I've brushed up against that several times pretty hard, where I'm like, man, I need me an energy drink. And I had to like, no, I, have, I don't remember when the last time was that I had an energy, energy drink, praise God. And when I do, I have to monitor, hey, listen, I'm not having two or three in a day, and I'm not going out and buying another one right, you know, the next day. Uh, I gotta, I gotta be careful, and that's something that's not strictly prohibited in the scriptures. It's an energy drink, but it is something that can mess with you. All right? Amen. Amen. So again, guys, it's not limited to just this. But in Ezekiel and in Leviticus, God strictly prohibits coming before Him out of sorts, drunk, high. Right? Uh, Ephesians chapter five. We read that seventeen and eighteen. Go ahead, Russell. You had two already in a row. You bet. So it says, Therefore do not be wise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Uh, Hosea chapter 4, verse 11. We looked at that one this morning. It says, Harlotry, wine, and new wine enslaves the heart. Is that a good thing? No. Come on, guys, wake up. Is that a good thing? No. Nail this down. Nail this down. This is something that's saying, hey, listen, there's a very real danger. Is this prohibited in the scriptures to drink alcohol? No. But is it very, very warned and cautioned? Yes. Come on, guys, is this warned and cautioned? Are they sending up signal flares? Danger! Danger! Yeah, that's loud. Get your attention. Come on, guys. Get on board. Is this a very real danger attached to this? Yes. Yes, it is. Very much. Very real danger. Enslavement? Yeah. Okay, but we want to know the truth because the truth sets us free. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Uh, I'm going to read that. We're starting to run out of time. It says, All things are lawful for me. But all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. That's where you and I need to live our entire life on every single subject. Amen. I know people that are married who ex exercise, let's call it, a, 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 
healthy relationship, intimacy with their with their spouse. But with their spouse is becoming unhealthy because they're becoming over the top in this area of intimacy. You know what I'm talking about? And it's out of control and it's now starting to rule your life and your spouse feels more like I don't know inferior used so it's not just in this area of alcohol it's also in every single other area um, why is it that, that okay I believe with all my heart and we saw the scriptures God God actually gave this to mankind just like he did sex why is it that these two areas are so messed with by Satan because they bring a lot of joy and pleasure but outside of their proper boundaries brings a lot of pain and destruction and enslavement <coughs> so we need to make sure that we're seeing this properly all right um, where else do we have we had Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 15 woe to him who drinks or who gives drink to his neighbor pressing him to your bottle even to make him drunk that you may look on his nakedness mm, wrong bad right Isaiah 28 verse 7 through 8 says but they also have entered or excuse me they have also erred through wine and though intoxicating drink are are out of the way. Check, can you adjust this? It's got some feedback in it. The priest and the prophet have erred through intoxicating drink. They are they are swallowed up by wine. They are out. They are out of the way through intoxicating drink. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. For all tables are full of vomit and filth. No place is clean. Again, guys, out of balance. Danger. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may follow intoxicating drink who continue until night till wine inflames them. I had one person tell me a long time ago, beer is so much more than a breakfast drink. <laughs> I think there's a passage in the scriptures for you. <laughs> we call it Isaiah chapter 5, verse 11. Woe to those who rise early in the morning. Right? Buddy, it's noon. It's noon o'clock somewhere. <laughs> Come on, guys. Be careful. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 22. Woe to men mighty at drinking wine. You're boasting how much you drink. Man, I can drink a keg and not even stumble. <laughs> not cool. Woe to a man valiant for mixing intoxicating drink. Again, guys, careful. Be very careful. Danger, danger. Galatians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Is that pretty serious? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty serious. That's scary serious, right? Yes. So again, what is what is in that list? Drunkenness. Drunkenness. A lifestyle, a perpetual habit, uh, something out of check, out of balance. Well, straight up, guys, the scripture says it leads to hell. That's pretty serious. First Corinthians chapter six, verse ten. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor Drunkards, nor revelries, nor extortioners, extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Psalm 75, verse 8, For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red. It is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. Is that view as positive? No. The Lord's wine. Build a cup of wrath. Negative things. Okay? Luke chapter 1, verse 15. We know this passage. This is uh, speaking about John the Baptist. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. 
He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. These are good verses. Yeah. Yeah. Titus chapter 2 talks about some amazing things. Uh, qualities of a sound church, qualifications uh, of overseers. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 talks about qualifications for overseers. Uh, and also qualifications for deacons. But here we go, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 23, it says, No longer drink, this is Paul speaking to Timothy, No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Um, believed to be at that moment, because of bad water, parasite, Paul is saying, hey, listen, take some, use this as a medicinal purposes only. Okay? I had my grandfather, he used to use what he called a hot toddy. Does anybody know what a hot toddy is? Yes. Oh my goodness, a lot of you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> yeah, we joked about Grandpa doing that, and he didn't have it. We, uh, he, he, would, he would go down to the liquor store and get one little bottle of, I can't even remember, brandy. And he would take it, mix it with honey and lemon juice, and then microwave it, and then take a shot once a day. And we would say, hey, Grandpa, did you get your liquor in you today? And he didn't think it was funny. Why? <laughs> I do. He had a, it was at his father. After his father died when he was 12 years old. We got the story out of this later. Quick, please. The short version. Your grandfather's father died when he was 12 years old. And for lack of other support, his mother, with your uncle, with your great uncle's, had a succession of men in her sure, life that sure. were all alcoholics. Okay. So when he turned 18, 20 years old, he abstained from alcohol from then until he was in his late 70s. And he was having a chronic cough, and he was drinking that for the cough. Yes. Um, and again, guys, what we're trying to do is bring balance, a healthy balance, to a very, very volatile subject. I know that we're... There's a lot to learn on this subject. You have the scriptures that I have referenced on here. These are not the only scriptures. You want to look it up, go, go look online. You can find a, a strong concordance. You type in one word, wine. And I'll show 976 hits. It shows you every place that the word wine is used in the scriptures, uh, both positive as well as negative, or strong drink, or you know things along those lines. You can find these things. Um, and you can see for yourself, now at the end of the day, guys, listen to me, look close at this. At the end of the day, what is this? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? At the end of the day, it's between you and God. Amen. If God says this is not a problem for you, then you make sure that it doesn't become a problem. Amen. All right? In your freedom, make sure that you're not brought under the power and the control of something. Once it starts to do that, then you back off. You want to know the quickest way to find out if it's on, if it's got the better hand up on you? Fast it. Fast it. If it's starting, if you can't hardly make it a three-day fast, then something's got a hold of you. If you push it and make it a 30-day fast, then buddy, you're counting down, not counting up. You know what I'm talking about? Woohoo! Two more days, and I'm gonna hit that thing. Be careful. Be careful. Kudos for making it that far. But you better be careful because this thing's got you a little bit stronger than you think. Is there freedom in this? Yes, there is. Is there very, very real dangers in this? Yes. Absolutely. Without a doubt. Your conscience between you and God will be your guide. Your conscience is not my guide. My conscience is not your guide. Amen? Amen. Don't Look down upon somebody on one side of the fence or on the other on this subject. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. Let's get ourselves ready for worship.